I'm very excited, very excited to be among the first to share with you Smith & Wesson's newest addition to the Bodyguard line, drumroll! The Bodyguard 2.0, yes! <laughs> My name is Julie Golub, I'm a veteran author, wife, mom, and pro shooter sharing guns, gear, and more here on YouTube and at Julie Golub on the socials. I am also a Smith & Wesson ambassador and have been shooting professionally for the company since the mid-2000s. I am very grateful to work with them and also share their products with you. You'll also see gear from Wheeler and Federal Ammunition, who are also my sponsors. To kick things off, I wanted to share with you a little history on The Bodyguard, the name that has been around for almost 70 years now with its first introduction as a snub nose revolver. For decades, when you thought of The Bodyguard pistol, a J-frame revolver came to mind. The modern day bodyguard has two different handguns that bear the name, another J-frame, and the introduction of the Bodyguard 380, a semi-auto micro-compact that came out in 2014. And when I say micro, I mean it. The semi-auto Bodyguard 380 is about as small as it gets in a center fire package. This gun, the Bodyguard 380, was designed with a specific purpose as a backup gun. Small enough for even pocket carry, What's not to like about the idea of a super small and slim pistol? But going beyond its micro-sized footprint, the Bodyguard 380 has a lot of things going for it. Extremely slim at just 0.75 inches with a six plus one round capacity. It weighs about 12 ounces empty. Uh, for such a small gun, it has a great set of iron sights and there is even a skew for the integrated Crimson Trace laser as well and that is the one I have here. Add to it, 380 has gained a lot of traction thanks to innovation in defensive ammunition. 15 years ago, many people didn't think 380 was effective enough, especially when limited to low capacity designs, and some people still feel the same way, but that's okay. <laughs> thanks to loads like Federal's HST, penetration and bullet design have greatly improved the caliber's suitability for protection. Now, true micro compacts kick more, especially with defensive loads, and the Bodyguard 380 is a hammer fired pistol that has a long and heavy trigger pull. That means it's not something I'd recommend as a primary carry gun for most people. It's pretty long, but for a backup pocket carry or times when concealing is a significant challenge, it is an excellent option. Now, 10 years later, this little pistol got a redesign and it is good. So good. Starting with the barrel length, just like its predecessor, it's 2.75 inches. The slide is a little wider than the Bodyguard 380's 0.75 inches and the 2.0 width comes in at 0.875 inches. As far as racking the slide, I would say it's a touch easier than the standard shield. Compared to the 1.0 bodyguard, it doesn't require much strength at all at the start of the rack, and these serrations on the 2.0 make it less likely for your hand to slip off. As far as ease though, it is not as easy as a shield easy or equalizer, if that's a concern for you. The controls are also bigger and less congested on the redesign. Think of this pistol as more of an M&P shield design in the location of these controls, and the slide stop is more substantial than the 1.0. Now moving on to the frame, the grip is a little bit larger, but in the best of ways. This is how it looks in my hands, where the Bodyguard 380 felt tiny. Uh, this just fills my hand very nicely. It's a bigger grip, but one that makes the shooting and gun handling experience better, especially when it comes to things like reloads. The mag button is better located on the grip for easier reach, and it has a nice amount of texture. Plus, it's reversible for left-handed shooters. Win-win. I also like that the takedown lever has some texture to it as well. I also really enjoy this addition of texturing on the frame. It serves as a little reference point for your support hand thumb. And this is nice because in my hands, in any hands that are larger than mine, there might be the tendency for the thumbs to go too high and rub on the slide. You don't want that. This little texture here is a great tactile indicator for where that thumb should go for a high thumbs forward grip. And for lefties, it's repeated on the right side of the gun as well. Not only does the grip fit the hand better, it's also longer than the Bodyguard 380, especially with that 12 round mag. 
Speaking of mags, you do get two in the box, one 10 rounder and one 12 round magazine. That's four more rounds with a short mag and double the mag capacity on the original 1.0 mags. And instead of feeling like you're gripping a bar with a blockier type of feel, the stack and a half mags on this 2.0 are wider so that the grip fills the palm more, just makes it more comfortable to handle. Now with the 10 round mag plus one in the chamber of Federal 99 grain HST, it weighs under a pound at 15.4 ounces. Switch to the 12 rounder, the weight is just barely over a pound at one pound 0.4 ounces. Now I'm not gonna lie, I found my mag springs to be very tight. I need a loader to help me get the last round in the 12 round mag and that's pretty rare. I don't usually have this issue. Even with Shield Plus mags, I can load them without an assist. Uh, one more note on these mags though, not only do you get more capacity, but the tapered design makes it easier to reload them faster and I find them far superior to the 1.0 for loading. On to the trigger. This is probably going to be the greatest upgrade compared to the original. I've carried the 1.0 in the past and though it's certainly shootable, with those sights and that finger groove mag in place to shoot it well it just takes more work. My years of needing to learn how to shoot longer and heavier triggers helps me when I take the 1.0 to the range, but as a beginner pistol, it's, it's a lot to overcome. On the other hand, the 2.0 trigger is excellent out of the box. Oh yes. Uh, answering popular demand, it is a flat face trigger. Mine breaks at just under four pounds. The three pull average on my Wheeler trigger gauge is three pounds, 13.6 ounces. Compare that to the original bodyguard at over seven pounds and a longer pull. Yes, it is quite the improvement. Something to note, the total trigger guard area on this pistol is much smaller than say a Shield Plus. It's even smaller than the Bodyguard 1.0, though the area for your finger to access the trigger is closer inside. The 1.0's curved trigger creates more space for the finger compared to the flat trigger on the 2.0. If you have very long or rather thick fingers or if you plan to wear gloves, it's something to check out when you handle this gun. As for the reset, it seems to be a touch longer than say my most recent Shield Plus video on the four inch Performance Center carry comp shield, and it is both audible and tactile. As I mentioned earlier, one of the ways the Bodyguard 380 stands out from its competitors is its sights. But even here, Smith Wesson made improvements. The front sight is bright orange tritium, so night sights right out of the box. The rear sight has serrations and what seems to be <laughs> I don't know how else to put it, an enormous U-notch. Even with this fatter front sight, there's a lot of light on both sides of the front sight when it's centered in the rear. The outer edges of the rear sight are even thinner than the width of the front sight, but the end result makes you automatically want to center things up nicely and it's easy to pick up. As a non-optic ready pistol, being so slim, this sight picture makes this pistol all the more shootable. To give you an idea of this Bodyguard 2.0 size, I wanted to show you some comparisons, starting with the largest, the Shield EZ versus the Bodyguard 2.0. The Bodyguard, come on, it, it just looks downright tiny compared to the EZ. Next up, I have a Shield Plus. This one happens to be in 30 Super Carry. From the side, it looks similar in size, but from this top angle, yeah, you can see the bodyguard is a lot slimmer. After that, I brought out my CSX. In many ways, the bodyguard kind of seems like a super slim CSX, although they are different, obviously. They do have a comparable sight radius. Then finally, the 1.0, and as mentioned, mine has the integrated laser. Similar dimensions here with the 1.0 coming in a tad smaller in some ways, but something to take note of is that sight radius. The longer sight radius is something that you'll appreciate when shooting this pistol. Here's a little footage comparison with the 1.0 as compared to the 2.0. As far as how the Bodyguard 2.0 shoots, it's much, much easier to shoot this faster than the 1.0, much, much easier. <laughs> the size of this gun suits my hands and I am happy with split times on a 10 yard target right out of the box. For most of the live fire footage you'll see here, I'm shooting softer range loads, Federal's American Eagle, 
But here's what 99 grain HST looks like. I also wanted to throw some footage in here of my husband from pistol-training.com. This is what the gun looks like in his hands. In many ways, you can think of this as a, a mini Shield Plus. The takedown is the same and the controls and overall feel mimic the Shield Plus, where I wouldn't recommend the Bodyguard 380, the 1.0, as a primary carry gun. This new Bodyguard 2.0 is a pistol worth looking at if you want something very small, but with larger pistol features and better shootability. I am very excited to see what holster options will be available for this as well. The Bodyguard 2.0 has a longer sight radius, it's slimmer than an inch, has MMP ergonomics, night sights, accessible controls, larger and deeper serrations, a flat face trigger at around four pounds out of the box, 12 plus one capacity with tapered mags that are easier to reload. It weighs close to a pound fully loaded and it's still small. Yeah, that's a winner. <laughs> Let me know what your questions are and I'll do my best to answer them. If you're on Facebook or Instagram, follow at Julie Golub as I share more content. And if you haven't signed up for my email list, there's a link to that below. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next one, be safe, have fun, and live your life fully loaded.